okay, here's an idea, or here's one, one, uh, oh, this is brand new data. It's still steaming. It's so fresh. All right. We, uh, we did this study this, uh, we did this study this summer. Uh, we wanted to know glyphosate, right? So this is Roundup. Roundup. Is it toxic to bees? There's recently been some, so they got the product through the registration process because glyphosate has no um, acute toxicity towards honeybees, okay? This is one of those examples of the active ingredient, okay, was registered. And they're now finding that it's disrupting the microbial community. It's a, glyphosate is, a, is an antimicrobial agent, and so it has strong effects on bacterial communities. And so by disrupting the bacterial community of the honeybee gut, it's making them more susceptible to other things in the environment. We wanted to know, actually, Juliet uh, uh, was the one who ran this study. Um, she wanted to know whether the commercial formulation Roundup PowerMax, whether it was toxic to honeybees. We wanted to do a risk assessment because bees are never only exposed to, to glyphosate, right? They're exposed to the commercial formulation of glyphosate, which is Roundup. How does this commercial formulation affect bees? So we ran a series of studies, both in the laboratory to determine the toxicity of glyphosate, and then in the field to see whether there was exposure. So we ran a dose response. And the data, we still haven't gotten all of it in yet, but we're still working on it. Mortality, so we looked at how much kills the bees. And then we wanted to know whether it slows the bees down and how it affects those bees in sublethal ways. One of the ways that we do this, this is what entomologists do for fun. We grab bees and we make these little chess men out of them and then we play games until <laughs> epiphany hits. I don't know. Now, what, what this is, is uh, so what you do for honeybees is uh, they have a, a tremendous brain, okay? And so they learn, right? And you can measure that learning by exposing them. So if they taste something, like a chemical or something that they like, then what they'll do is they'll avert their tongue. So they, and then you can measure how long and how quickly that happens as a, as a sensory stimulation, more or less. And so we've been using this for a long time to understand how bees uh, perceive uh, food stuff and then also toxicants in the environment. And so you basically just take a little Q-tip, rub their little, their little feet, and then you wait for them to lick. Okay, Roundup at label rates killed 99% of the bees. Whoops. That wasn't supposed to happen. Glyphosate is safe. Roundup must be safe. This is the label rate. We see it's reduced uh, the longevity in this case um, uh, substantially over the untreated ones. This, so as, as an experimental control, we also put in like a, a, a toxin that was super toxic to insects. Potassium arsenate, arsenic. That's where that falls on the graph. Roundup was about as toxic as one of the more toxic control substances that we use. Yeah. Uh, good question. No, we did not in this study. No, we did not. So is it glyphosate or is it the inactive ingredients within the Roundup molecule? I think that we're starting to understand that those inactive ingredients are actually some of the more toxic substances that we can contrive. They're incredibly damaging to cell membranes and things along these lines. And so, uh, yeah, the environmental effects of things like atrazine um, are magnified substantially by the commercial formulation. And those uh, inactive ingredients are almost entirely unregulated right now. Um, they're almost entirely unregulated. Okay, so another way that entomologists have fun is that we put the bees in here and then we start a timer and then we chase them around with a pen and figure out how far they walked over a certain amount of time and then this gives us an idea of how fast these insects are walking. What is a slow, uh, slow bee in the field? It's a dead bee, <laughs> right? 
Glyphosate substantially and significantly reduced the mobility of these insects as well. What is colony collapse disorder? It's bees forgetting how to be bees. They can't remember how to return to the nest. They can't remember where home is anymore. They can't remember when it gets cold that they should form a ball to regulate their heat. They can't remember suddenly there's a super on top and we're bursting at the seams. We don't know what to do. With, we don't have enough space. There's a whole box above us, but we can't remember that we're supposed to move up. That's what's happening to the bees. That's what makes neonicotinoids and other neurotoxins like this so insidious, is that traditional approaches to risk management do not apply. They just don't work with sublethal effects. We went out into beehives around the region to South Dakota, North Dakota, and Minnesota. 87% of the hives had honey that was contaminated with glyphosate. Whoops. How about dicamba? Are we interested in that? It's never been, I've, I, have, I have found one study that was looked at the mortality or the, uh, the dose response of dicamba to honeybees from 1978. We need, where's the data? As we make these huge shifts in our pesticide use, my God, what are we doing 